In this post, you will discover marketing is not always what people think it is and how to embrace the proper marketing mindset as a writer. The book metadata, description, categories, keywords, and pricing, opt the platforms, and email lists. And the book launch strategy, social media, launch content, and email newsletter. Marketing is a concept I have feared for a long time. It still holds negative connotations among consumers of the way it pervades our life, where it's ubiquitous and within view, whether email, social media, platforms, billboards, ads in retail, or commercial breaks. The only recluse from it is venturing into nature. I've done my best work to block out ads in the landscape on my phone, web browsing, or cruising down the road. I have yet to venture for more than 100 feet without some ad copy welcoming me with some epic deal that touches on my psyche of FOMO. So, I thought for a long time until I stumbled on a gem who reframed my outlook on it ever since. Marketing is sharing what you love with people who appreciate hearing about it. Joanna Penn, How to Market a Book I still remember all the folks who tried to upsell me on a product without consideration of what I needed based on my values. It's an education issue, assessing if they have understood and empathized with the other person's wants and needs and discerning if it's superficial or intentional value add. One of my philosophies in the art of living a good life is when I acquire or consume an experience, whether it's information, education, entertainment, or wisdom, I ask myself, does it provide temporary relief or adds value to living a better life? Am I reading a book because everyone is reading it and it's tied to the feeling of FOMO? Or is there an area of my life where there is an explicit value gain? When you share something that you find a real value, do you consider how valuable it is to others? What effects are you hoping it will produce? And this makes marketing hard to master. As I asked before, releasing content to the public space, am I authentically sharing what I love that will resonate with others? With that said, there is a lot of consideration to aligning this vision with a marketing strategy that touches the essence of that message. When it comes to the fact that marketing is literally ubiquitous and congested and how you even get seen by your ideal readers, sure, you have your avatar and all the information describing them, You have to curate and publish to the platforms they will hopefully find your book. From my experience, it's both an art and a science. I won't go into the details of that process. There are so many resources available. And if you are writing books originally from your own interests, then it's likely you are a description of an ideal reader for starters. Once you have an ideal reader in mind and understand your book, you must set up the book's metadata, description, categories, keywords, and pricing. Whatever retailer you publish your book on, They all have a description field, also called sales description, of what the book is about. They are just as important as the book cover and title. Here are some of the reasons from Kinderpreneur. They get readers interested in your book. They can lead to increased sales of your book. They are part of your book's first impression, along with the book cover and title. And they provide a reason someone should buy your book. And in physical retail stores, you need a solid book blurb on the back cover to attract your ideal reader. Unlike the book's description fields on Amazon, you cannot change the print book blurb once it's on the shelf in Barnes & Noble. One recommendation is to research top-selling books in your genre and study their book description. Apply some techniques for nonfiction or fiction and run an A-B test. If you have a budget, hire a professional. As a creative writer, copywriting is a different mindset and skill. It doesn't come naturally without practice. For my book, I wrote what the book is about and hired a professional poet who has written hundreds of book blurbs and descriptions. Then I sent the final book blurb to my designer. If you believe your book blurb is weak and improve it to increase sales, you can always take the book off the shelf, but that will come at a cost. I'll lump together categories and keywords as they are closely related. When readers shop on a platform like Amazon, they know which genre of books they like. They are looking for new books to add to their repertoire. And the two ways they can accomplish this is on Amazon, searching through category or keyword phrase searches. The former will look like this, a picture of Amazon browsing book categories, while the latter looks like this, an animation of a keyword search on Amazon. When you upload your book with Amazon, you are only allowed to select up to three categories. As for searching for the best categories to add, you can research similar books, check bestsellers in the book's genre, and see a list of categories that match the book's theme. There are two methods I've used. I will research similar books in the theme and style of my book. For instance, I took inspiration from classical authors like William Shakespeare, Lloyd Byron, and similar poetry books and found out what categories they are being ranked for and do they share these traits. I've used tools like Publisher Rocket or Booklink to identify additional categories they are being ranked for. Then curate a list of these categories in my book project folder in a spreadsheet. 
And if you run a category search, you will get this for the killer version of the cool and warmth of hearts. The print version has a different category structure, so I had to perform the exact search to identify which categories I would apply and request for my book. The second method readers can find a book is through keyword search in the Amazon search bar. You can have up to seven keyword searches apply for the book in the KDP upload process. A picture of Amazon KDP seven keywords box fields to fill out for a book. And this is where it gets complicated. You can write up to 50 characters in each box, meaning each box doesn't have to be a single word keywords, but multiple keywords or phrases. The complication doesn't stop there. Here are six questions asked about this esoteric topic around keywords. Does filling in all 50 characters index your book for more keywords? Yes. Does Amazon rearrange the keywords and index for them, or just use the exact phrase you type in? Yes. If I have the same keyword more than once, does that help or hurt? No. Does targeting a specific phrase help with rankings? Yes. Is it better to put my keywords in the title, subtitle, or keyword box? Yes. If only keyword search was kept simple. Yet on the plus side, this helps readers find the book with targeted search phrases, especially coming up with unique keyword searches for a specific book. I've used what the book is about, which encompasses this theme, categorized as book type and genre, and sub-themes keywords found in my book. Unfortunately, there is no precise pricing for books, and there are several factors to consider when pricing a book. First is your publishing goal. There are recommendations if you are a new author or have multiple books available. Some questions to consider is your focus on making as much money as possible, sell as many copies as you can. When you are a new author needing to establish brand awareness, it's suggested to price low and take advantage of features like Kindle Unlimited and free day promotion with promotional websites. Whereas with the author who has many books available, you can make the first book in a series or earlier books in non-series price low and scale up the newer ones. It's easier to experiment with ebook pricing because you don't have to factor in the material cost to make a print book. And it varies between the paperback and hardcover with page count. Also, if you have a book with illustration and color that adds to the cost as well. My objective was to gain customers' trust by keeping the price as low as possible and going exclusive with my ebook on Amazon to make use of the features since I was a new author without a sizable following on social media or email list. Before all this, I looked into the prices of books in the same genre that was in the same category. I found that many bestsellers had higher prices than mine to gain readers' attention. The combination of hundreds to thousands of reviews and the solid following of these best-selling authors have supported their decision to price their books higher. The pricing became more critical on the print versions because of the publishing costs and Amazon royalty fee for each copy sold. So I looked at similar book prices as I did with the ebook and checked both their formats for paperback and hardcover, trim size such as 5x8 or 6x9, and page count. Once I found similar books near my book's format, trim size, and page count, I will price a dollar or two below that amount as the focus was brand awareness in the hopes of selling as many books as I could and hopefully gaining reviews to further increase my brand awareness. Different strategies for authors include the social media landscape. Some have access on one or two platforms where most of their fans live. However, if you choose to play the long game as an author, in that case, there are recommendations I will cover that are within your control than at the hands of another platform. It's possible to have a Twitter or Instagram account and do exceptionally well and build a following of fans. However, remember that those platforms could one day be gone, or your account could get hacked or deleted and all that effort is gone. The same could happen with your website and email list, but this is less common than the others. Additionally, most people who follow an author on social media are followers rather than fans. Fans are the ones who are more likely to support an author with the purchase of their books, courses, or donations made through a website like Patreon. Fans are the ones who exchange their email address and acquire a freebie from a reader magnet because they find value in what an author provides. Plus, conversion with email subscribers is much higher than on social media, while engagement is generally higher on social media, so it's worth setting up a website, email, service provider, and read a magnet because people love free stuff. It's a great way to invite them and peek into your world to see if they like it. My strategy was a WordPress website to showcase my upcoming books, a catalog of books, a preview of the book in an about me section, and a free page with reader magnets. Link my reader magnets with an email service provider landing page, in this case MailerLite, to collect email addresses which I can provide them with upcoming books, my author life, book updates, and more. A blog page if they are interested in the topics I love to write about and hopefully find value in. 
that's it so far. And one more consideration, other essential platforms for authors are Goodreads, Amazon Author Central, and BookBub. Some readers prefer only connecting with the author's work on these platforms and then sharing the email addresses or following an author on a social media platform. The common consensus is to focus on one or two social media platforms to drive the most traffic, as some of the downsides of managing multiple accounts will suck up your time and energy, plus your level of interest and engagement on multiple platforms and the content you curate. For example, I've chosen Instagram as my primary because I receive a lot of visual inspiration from my writing, and soon I will add YouTube to that list where I plan to release videos on topics I find value in and hope others will. I have an account on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Medium. They serve different purposes, such as Facebook is more of a personal connection with family and friends, and Twitter receiving updates about topics I like, LinkedIn, where I have a professional network for my career in the IT industry, and Medium to connect with like-minded writers. The book launch strategy is unique to each book, with each elements that pertain before and after its launch. The launch strategy will encompass timing in pre-launch, launch day, and post-launch tasks. The pre-launch window starts as early as two months before the book's release, or even earlier than that, with subsequent tasks one month out, two weeks out, and days before. The focus I have had for two months before release, two month pre-launch. Upload a description of the book and set the launch date via Amazon KDP. Set up off the central page so I can collect and upload editorial reviews to the book's Amazon editorial review section. Plan which promotional sites I will use for the book's five free days and budget it and then schedule the date for each on Amazon KDP. Contact and kindly request from book blog reviewers. Read and provide a review on the book launch date and Books for Grammars showcase my book on their Instagram account. Create an inventory of promo images for social media posts and email campaigns and some promo sites that require you to upload your own. On social media, I will share excerpts from the book the book cover and reader magnet linking a free ebook chat book found in the bio section with a social link. Bonus, if you have an ARC team, this is a great way to gain a good chunk of reviews by sending that team an advanced copy of the book and having them provide a review on the launch date. One month pre-launch. Kindly follow up with any book blog reviewers and books for grammar if they have not already touched base with you. Upload and publish the paperback and hardcover copies of the book. Link book release on BookBub and within budget, pay for new re release alerts. One week pre-launch. Turn on the pre-order for the ebook and change the price to 99 cents on Amazon. Kindly follow up with book blog reviewers and books for grammars to remind them that the book is seven days from launch. Social media and email posts announcing the book are almost available. Three days before the launch. Kindly follow up with book blog reviewers with an Amazon review link of the book and a kind reminder to the books for grammars that is three days away from launch. Launch day. Book launches at 99 cents and a book promo site, Bargain Booksy, will send out to their email list of low price book deals, my book being one of them. Social media email posts that the book is live, two days post launch. The book's Amazon free day is live and a book promo site, Free Booksy, will send out to their email list about the book promotion social media and email posts about the book deals being free today only. Four days post launch. Amazon free days live and a book promo site just Kindle books will send out to their email list about the promotion. Social media and email posts about book deals being free today only. Six days post launch. Amazon free days live and a book promo site the fussy librarian will send out to their email list about the promotion. Social media and email posts about the book deals being free today only. Eight days post launch. Amazon Free Day is live and a book promo site free discounted books will send out to the email list about the promotion. Social media and email posts about the book deals being free today only. 10 days post launch. Amazon Free Day is live and a book promo site Awesome Gang will send out to the email list about the promotion. Social media and email list posts about the book deal being free today only. Suppose you are wondering why I schedule free days every two days instead of consecutive days. In that case, it's because of how the Amazon algorithm works, and I'm trying to ride and sustain high ranking then spikes, mentioned in launch to market by Chris Fox. With that said, this may not be the perfect strategy that will work with every book, but it's better than shooting blindly. Hoping my book is good enough to stand on its own. And my friends, that sums up the brief marketing aspect of my book. Marketing's a beast, and I covered the icing on the cake. Of course, there's more detail around the topic of the book's marketing I discuss, which I will not go into given it will take a short ebook to cover it all. That could be an idea for a reader magnet ebook promoted to authors. The gist. Foremost, develop the mindset that marketing is sharing what you love with people who appreciate hearing about it. All the effort put into creating a book should not go to waste and never find its reader. 
You never know how much value it can provide to someone, even if it's one. Remember, you are bringing a new perspective into the world. Yeah, sure, nothing new about the theme and genre most books are found in, but that's not the point. As long as you attempted to write it in your voice, readers will recognize and praise. A book's metadata cannot be passed if you want readers to find your book on major retailers, especially Amazon. Some research performed for developing a book description blurb complements a book's title and cover and invites the reader to preview it. Performing additional research to find the best relevant categories and keywords will ease the work for readers in discovering a new book. Competitive pricing and strategy makes a difference whether you are new or an existing author and your publishing goals. If you want to play the long game as an author, it's best to have a foundation, a website, an email list, and a reader magnet. You lack control over whatever happens to your social media accounts or the accounts on platforms like Amazon and Goodreads. Of course, setting up those accounts is painted in broad strokes, which leads to higher brand awareness. Although my book launch strategy has yet to be planned out in further months, as you typically find in your web search, most of the basics remain the same, and every author has a strategy. Whether you go exclusive for an ebook to take advantage of Amazon's Kindle Unlimited and free day promos, and line up with promotional sites, or prefer to go wide with all retailers, there is no perfect science to it. However, there are recommendations newbie authors can go exclusive, price low from brand awareness, or established authors go wide, price competitively for more sales. You can always change up your strategy every 3, 6, or 12 months. Remember to give it time and see how the first strategy plays out.